in many ways it's like going out into space. You're dependent entirely on your little vessel for survival and everything that you bring with you. The oceans are huge. They cover 70% of our planet. So you're really out there for months at a time and you see nothing but blue water and blue sky. So there's definitely a lot of challenges our oceans are facing. But the important thing is for there to be a focus on the oceans, for them not to be hidden and out of sight, but for us to really understand and make a concerted global effort to address those issues. My background is in science. I did my graduate degree in molecular biology and I worked in business after that. And then I took some time off to do a, a number of adventures. And one of them was rowing across the Atlantic Ocean. I spent five months rowing from Lisbon, Portugal to Limon, Costa Rica. It's physically challenging, it's mentally challenging, and you get to experience the ocean in a way that people will rarely be able to. I mean, you're out on the water day after day, you're rowing all night, you row in two hour shift and you experience the ocean as a foreigner, you know, you're, you're a visitor in their ecosystem. And I think that in many ways is very humbling. You know, there are so many days where we just struggle to make any progress and you look at the creatures around you who are just flourishing and thriving and adapted for this environment. And I think, you know, it helps put into perspective how complex our environment is and how well adapted other creatures are and how incredible they are. It was the worst hurricane season in all of history, so we actually got hit by two hurricanes as well as three tropical storms. We were in 50-foot waves, very challenging and frightening, and uh, yeah, definitely something I, I wouldn't recommend going through. <laughs> well, we've uh, got another hurricane coming towards us, and we've done everything we possibly can to uh, protect our heads. We've actually fastened uh, helmets which we've made from uh, pantyhose and we've stuffed the interior with clothing and so if we do end up banging our heads against the wall it will actually protect us uh, somewhat much better than uh, not having anything at all. When we were getting towards the end of our row, about um, four months in as we were approaching the coast of Central America, we saw quite a bit of plastic pollution. It was in an area where currents converged and so it was just a, a line of plastic debris that stretched you know, for miles into the horizon. And so that was really disappointing and discouraging and you know, basically we're out in the middle of nowhere but yet there's this footprint of uh, human Pollution. Here we are, we just arrived in St. Lucia. We've been on this boat for 120 days. 120 days without walking on this roly-poly boat. And now I'm going to take my first steps. So uh, crossing my fingers at it, I'll go okay. Oh, it's not easy. It feels like everything's moving. So through our expeditions, we started to design boats for our own use, um, as well as it turned out other people were interested in the boats that we built. So basically, you know, I had a pretty good knowledge of how small boats work in big waves. That translated really well into autonomous boats. I think the interest came actually during our ocean row, realizing how challenging it is to travel that ocean in a crewed vessel and how much better equipped autonomous technology would be for something like that. And what if you had just hundreds of boats out here, you know, collecting all this information, they could see the things that nobody else could see and then share it with the world. There had been this long-standing challenge to send an autonomous boat across the Atlantic. We just started designing a boat in the corner of our garage garage and as we started to design it we started to recognize that you know this boat could really play a role in helping us understand our oceans better and it has advantages so that led us to decide to form it into a company. 
At Open Ocean Robotics, we develop solar-powered autonomous boats that can go out and collect ocean data for months at a time. So this helps ocean industries, researchers, government better understand our oceans, operate more sustainably and safely, and protect our oceans. Our boats have been used on a few pilots. So one has been for seafloor mapping, and another project that our boat is being used for right now is collecting a variety of oceanographic and environmental environmental data, um, such as ocean temperature, salinity, wind direction, um, all of those kinds of things. The challenge right now is getting ocean data, and there really are very few good solutions. And I feel very strongly that marine robotics and uncrewed surface vehicles like ours will play a critical role in that. But ultimately, it's the data from the ocean that we need. And once we are able to start collecting that data, we can look at using analytics to be able to understand the ocean in ways that currently is impossible. So by being able to get the information information that currently we just can't get, we can support the sustainability of our oceans.